the display screen shows your working environment. We call this the desktop. It is an electronic log for an office. On the screens are small pictures or icons representing familiar office objects. This turned black because I pointed to it with the mouse and clicked the mouse button. It has two buttons on top that can be sensed under program control. You can use these buttons to specify objects and destinations for commands. We call this selecting the object. Selected objects highlight in reverse video. You can then operate on the selection with the delete, copy, move keys, and other keys. Let me select some of the other icons on the desktop. This is a folder, a records file, a file drawer, 3270 and teletype terminals, printers, and in and out mail baskets. Using the move key, you can arrange your desktop in any way you like. Move is the most powerful command in the system. It replaces a large number of conventional computer commands, which we will point out as we go along. The copy command is also a powerful one in STAR. It establishes a paradigm for creating. In order to create a new document, for example, you copy an existing one. Typically, STAR users construct blank documents to act as form path sources for new ones. Making a copy of one of these blank documents is like tearing a sheet off a pad of paper. The ability of users to make their own form pads is an example of the user tearability built into the system. The Show Properties command allows you to display and change the properties of an object, such as the name of an icon. We will discuss properties later. You don't have to remember which ones are available or their names. The window shows them to you. You select the one you want and copy it to the desktop using the copy key. No further initialization is necessary. The printer is now ready for use. This is an example of how the STAR user interface relies on seeing and pointing as opposed to remembering and typing. There is no file or retrieve command in STAR. Filing is done by moving an icon into or out of a file drawer. These are electronic analogs of the drawers in an office filing cabinet. File drawers are physically stored on file servers connected to the Ethernet. These are local ones stored on file servers in my building in Palo Alto. These are stored on file servers in Los Angeles. You can have as many or as few file drawers on your desktop as you want. Regardless of where they're stored, you interact with them in the same way. When you open a file drawer, it displays a filing window. Each object stored in the file drawer is represented by a miniature icon, a name, and some other information. The names need not be unique or even present. For example, there are two copies of the document named NCC script. The dates tell me which is the latest version. Filing is accomplished by editing filing windows. You can select an object with a mouse and move or copy it out to the desktop. This transfers the object from the file server over the Ethernet to the local disk attached to your STAR workstation. You can also move it from the desktop into a file drawer or out of one file drawer and into another for straight server-to-server -server transfers. Moving deletes the object from its old location. Copying leaves the original behind unchanged. Similarly, there is no print command. Printing is accomplished by moving an object to a printer icon. When you do this, a special window called an option sheet automatically appears. This is a dedicated form-like environment that is widely used in STAR to supply arguments to commands 
or to show properties of objects. Its purpose is that it makes all of the options visible. You don't have to remember what they are. In this case, you can specify the number of copies to print and whether you want the document repaginated before it is